Welcome. This session is how we're dealing with metrics at scale on GitLab.com. My name is Andrew Newdigit, and I'm an engineer at GitLab, where I work in the infrastructure team, and I help work uh, help build GitLab.com. This talk is about how we've scaled our monitoring to support a site that has, over the past few years, grown rapidly in size and complexity. To illustrate that growth, here are some figures to show how things have changed since I joined. Back in 2017, we'd only recently adopted Prometheus and were migrating off InfluxDB. We had a single Prometheus server, six infrastructure engineers, a handful of alerting rules and recording rules. We only had 21 dashboards and we were processing about 100,000 samples per second. Roll forward for a bit years and we now run a Thanos federated cluster deployed into Kubernetes using Tanker. The infrastructure department is around 40 people, so six times bigger. We have over 2,600 recording rules, 400 Grafana dashboards, and we're ingesting about 2.8 million samples per second. So it's important to state this, what worked for us then worked fine for us at that scale. It was the right solution at the time, but that approach wouldn't work for us now. And this talk is about some of the tools and techniques that we've used to go from that scale to where we are today. So what prompted our efforts to improve our alerting? Uh, we were seeing numerous problems that indicated that our approach to monitoring was no longer working for us. One of these problems was low precision alerting. By this, we mean that the proportion of alerts that was actionable was low, and we we're seeing a high number of false positives. At any time, many of the alerting rules inadvertently generated low quality, unactionable, flappy alerts. Very often, the engineer on call would determine that users were not being impacted, that everything seemed okay, and they would acknowledge the alert and effectively ignore it. Not only was the precision of our alerts very poor, but so was the recall. Recall refers to the proportion of user impacting events that are detected by the alerting system. This means that instead of finding out about incidents through an alert, we would sometimes be made aware of the incident by people rather than the software that we'd built to detect these incidents. In other cases, the alert would fire, but too late. And we already knew that there was a problem, and now it was just extra noise while we were trying to solve the issue. Yet another problem we found was that the dashboards were very often broken and not working as we expected. Since our dashboards were not managed alongside our other metrics, there was no way of validating that they were still working until we took a look at them. And this often happened during an incident. So now, instead of having one problem, we had two, in that we had to fix the dashboard before we could fix the problem. One of the things that we began to realize was that having three distinct configurations for our metric stack was part of the problem. The source of metrics was independent from alerting and recording rules. Our alerting and recording rules were managed independently from our dashboards, and our dashboards weren't stored in Git, and they didn't have any form of change control, and they weren't validated. With this in mind, we set out to improve our stack with these goals. One, to develop a common monitoring strategy across all of our services based on a set of key metrics and service level indicators. Two, use those metrics to improve the precision, recall, and detection time of our alerts. And three, unify our metrics, SLO, alerting configuration, recording rules, dashboards, everything into a single source to avoid inconsistencies between the definitions. Let's look at how we tackle the first goal of building a set of key metrics for our application. We based our metrics on Google's four golden signals, but made some changes to better fit our requirements. For latency, we measure aptX as a ratio rather than a percentile duration measurement in seconds. Requests and errors are measured at a per second rate, and saturation is measured as a percent, lower being better. Saturation is a pretty big topic on its own, so I'm not going to go into detail on this today. If you're interested in finding out more, here's a plug for a talk I did on, a saturation, on saturation monitoring on gitlab.com. I've included a link to the slides. With our key metrics decided on, the next step was to break the application down, first into a set of services, and then break each service down into a set of components. So, for example, we modeled web, Git, and API services, 
and then broke these down further into one or more components. For the Git service, for example, we have SSH and HTTPS components. Each component has three key metrics, app decks, errors, and requests. So for some components, uh, or sorry, pardon me, for some components, it's not always possible to measure latency directly, so app decks is optional in those cases. From our three key metrics, we're able to derive two service level indicators, or SLIs. An SLI is normally expressed as a percentage of requests that are bad. Um, an app dex is really the inverse of that. It's a percentage of requests that have a satisfactory latency or good. Uh, because our organization was already using the concept of app dex, we decided it would be better to adapt our monitoring system to the organization rather than the other way around. Therefore, our app dex SLI is an inverted SLI with 100% being the best service level. For errors, we use a conventional SLI definition with 0% being no errors and the best service level. Once we had our approach to monitoring our key metrics in place, it was time to start thinking about our second goal to improve the quality of our alerting. As I mentioned, for each component, we derived two SLIs, AppDex and errors. For each of these, we set a service level objective uh, and, trigger, and triggered an alert if an SLI is violating its SLO target. If our AppDex is below, SL, is below the SLO threshold or our error ratio is above SLO, we trigger an alert. For some services, we also trigger anomaly alerts for high request rate anomalies. The original approach we took to alert was any violations over a five minute period. Uh, for example, if you have a thousand requests in a five minute period and two of those requests result in an error, two in a thousand gives you 0.2% error rate. And if you have a 99.9% .9 SLO, this 0.2% exceeds the 0.1% threshold, causing the alert to fire. Unfortunately, this is a very naive approach and it has very poor precision in that it generates a huge number of false positives. Taken to the extreme, the alert could fire hundreds of times a day, yet the, SLO, the SLI could still achieve its SLO. In fact, our new alerting was no better than the old alerts that we were trying to improve on. We went back to the drawing board and looked for better alternatives. We settled on using multi-window, multi-burn rate alerts instead. I'm not going to go into the details in this talk, but if you're interested in knowing more, Google have published an excellent guide in their SRE workbook, I've included a link on the slide. This approach has provided us with high precision, low detection time, and good recall on our alerts. The problem with this approach is the amount of complexity it brings. For each component that we monitor, we need 12 recording rules to be correctly configured. With dozens of components, you really need a configuration tool to help with this, as doing it manually would be very painful. So before we could roll out our SLO alerting with multi-window, multi-burn rate alerts, we needed to investigate better tooling to deal with all the repetitive configuration that was required. For each service, we may have several dozen similar but slightly different recording rules. In our dashboards, we might have other queries that are also similar but use different aggregations. Changing these, area, these queries was an error-prone error -prone process. So we started thinking about what tools we could use to make this process easier. The idea we had was to describe all of our metrics in what we call the metrics catalog. This is an abstract configuration. It's written in JSON and it's designed to be user-friendly, validatable, and with as little repetition as possible. The configuration is stored in Git, changes managed through merge requests, on commit, we use CI to validate the config, generate new Prometheus recording rules, alert configurations, and Grafana dashboards, amongst other resources. This is what a typical entry in the catalog looks like. This definition is from the web service and shows one component from that service called Workhorse. We define our SLOs as well as our app decks, our request rates, and error rates that will be used to generate the SLIs. These definitions are then used to generate Prometheus expressions in our Prometheus recording rule configuration, as well as dashboards and everything else. 
as you can see, this generates lots of very similar but slightly different Prometheus configuration, uh, depending on the burn rates that you're evaluating. The last part of our goal was to generate our dashboards too. Now, as it happens, the Grafana team have built a JSONet library called Grafonet. We could use it to automatically generate our Grafana dashboards from the metrics catalog. This is a typical example of one of our generated dashboards. This is from our web service dashboard. And what I really like about these dashboards is the consistency. We have dozens of different services, and for each service, the dashboard layout, the color scheme, the data presented is consistent. The top row of each dashboard provides an aggregation of all the SLIs within that service, and this is followed by a row for each component of the service with charts for its key metrics and collapse rows containing even more detail. Once we had our SLO monitoring in place, the next challenge we faced was making SLO alerts easier for operators and engineers to understand. And in particular, reducing the time to diagnosis on our SLO alerts. One of the big differences between the old way that we alerted with causal alerts and our SLO alerts is that when an SLO alert fires, it's not always immediately apparent what the problem is. It's up to the operator to understand the SLI, then investigate the problem by digging through metrics, logs, and other signals until the cause becomes apparent. So our goal here is to give the operator the tools to navigate from an SLO violation signal back up, to the, back up the stack to the cause of the problem. Here's an example of, to illustrate why our existing tooling was insufficient for our needs. Alert Manager has a feature that provides a link to the Prometheus UI pre-populated with the query that caused the alert to fire. It's called Generator URL. Before we moved over to SLO violation alerts, we relied pretty heavily on this feature. Each alert would include a link to the expression that caused it. In the Prometheus UI, we would manipulate the expression by adding labels, changing selectors, or changing aggregations until we could spot the problem. What we found with SLO alerts is that this approach doesn't work very well. The problem is that the recording rules that we used in the expression are highly aggregated and it's likely that the labels which may have been useful in an investigation have been removed. Unfortunately, there's no quick way to navigate back to the source expression from a recording rule. Arriving at a chart of an SLO burn rate expression like this often led to more confusion for engineers instead of clarity. We needed to create a better initial experience for the operator following an alert. The way we addressed this was to take advantage of the metadata present in the, metric, in the metrics catalog. Since we're generating the SLO alerts and the dashboard from the same source, we can include deep links from the appropriate, uh, to the appropriate Grafana panel, and these can be embedded directly in the generated alert definition. By, by navigating to the dashboard from the alerts, the operator is immediately provided with context around the alert signal, uh, the thresholds, the status of other SLIs in the same service, and links for onwards investigation. In our generated dashboards for each component, we include this set of links to other observability tools that we use to assist in deeper investigation into problems for that component. Like everything else, these links are described in the metrics catalog. They include links into stack driver, sentry, Kibana searches and visualizations, amongst other things. They're presented directly alongside each component in the Grafana dashboard. So when arriving at a dashboard from an alert, we get an easy experience for the on-call engineer to continue their investigation in, through our other observability tools. The final part of this talk describes the challenges we've experienced scaling ISLO monitoring from a single Prometheus server up to the Thanos Federated cluster that we use today. Let's start off by describing the simplest approach to SLO monitoring, and that is by using a single Prometheus instance for monitoring the entire application. With this approach, all work to collect metrics, aggregate the, them into SLIs, and evaluate those SLIs against service level objectives is done in a single Prometheus server. This approach is very straightforward and easy to operate, but it's limited in how far we are able to vertically scale a single Prometheus instance. Once we hit that scaling limit, the next logical step is to break the monitoring down into multiple siloed Prometheus instances. 
With this approach, the data for each SLI is fully processed within a single Prometheus instance, so we can continue to collect, aggregate, and evaluate our SLIs in a similar manner to before, except that each Prometheus only contains a distinct subset of the SLIs. In Grafana, we use multiple data sources to visualize data across different sources. The advantage of this approach is that it remains fairly simple to both deploy and understand while allowing us to scale Prometheus horizontally. One limitation to this approach, though, is that all the metrics required to evaluate an SLI must be contained within a single Prometheus instance. And unfortunately, this requirement became problematic for us. This happened when our Kubernetes migration project kicked off. As workloads migrated to Kubernetes, some SLIs were split between Prometheus instances uh, used for VMs and new Prometheus instances contained within our Kubernetes cluster. This was made worse by the fact that we decided to employ three zonal Kubernetes clusters, each with their own Prometheus instance. So instead of metrics being collected in a single Prometheus instance, some of our SLIs were now being split between up to four different instances. And the problem with this is that there may be local SLO violations, but when aggregated across the entire application, the service level objective is not being violated. This led to a series of low precision alerts, which we nicknamed split brain alerts. Uh, because they were only applicable to a single Prometheus instance, not the entire cluster. A second problem with having SLIs split between multiple Prometheus instances is that it becomes difficult to get a global view of an SLI, since we need to combine data from multiple sources in our visualizations. The solution we used to address this problem was to deploy Thanos. Thanos is a CNCF incubating project. I'm sure many of you know of it. Thanos provides single view across multiple Prometheus instances. It also has a component called Thanos rule, which can be used for evaluating recording rules against the single view. This provides us with a mechanism to aggregate across multiple Prometheus instances. Thanos rule will also evaluate alerts using the same approach as Prometheus, except that it evaluates using the single global view once again. To use Thanos rule, we broke our SLO recording rules into two parts. Most of the metrics processing remains in Prometheus. Here we convert potentially higher cardinality application metrics into a low cardinality key metric constituents. Then in Thanos rule, we sum the key metric constituents across all instances before calculating global aptX and error rate SLIs. These are evaluated against SLOs in Thanos ruler to provide alerting on globally aggregated values, doing away with the problem of the split brain alerts. This example configuration shows how we aggregate multiple Prometheus metrics in a Thanos rule using recording rules. For each of our key metrics, we aggregate all our Prometheus metrics whilst being careful to exclude any previously evaluated Thanos metrics. The first recording rule aggregates the error rate SLI, the second shows operation rate, and the third recording rule uses the two previous values to create a global error ratio SLI. Note that we use monitor equals global as a Thanos selector to control whether to include or exclude globally aggregated metrics in these expressions. Another important point is that the partial response strategy is set to warn instead of the default, which is abort. The reason for this is that when partial response is set to warn, if a single Prometheus store is unavailable, um, the aggregation won't fail. Instead, the metrics from that Prometheus instance will temporarily not be included in the aggregation, but this is a better trade-off than losing all the metrics. We work around this by monitoring for partial response warnings in our monitoring stack. In conclusion, here are some of the ways we've learned to deal with metrics at scale. Firstly, we define key metrics for each service component. We manage complexity and repetition by using an abstract definition in the metrics catalog as our single source of truth. We migrate it to multi-window, multi-burn rate SLO alerts for improved alerting. We generate our dashboards to ensure that they're kept up to date and validated. We focus on improving on-call engineers' experience because SLO alerts are not always intuitive. And finally, we federated our service level monitoring using Thanos and Thanos rule. Uh, one last point, if you're interested in learning more, I highly recommend reading these fantastic resources on monitoring in general and SLO monitoring in particular. Finally, 
All the code for our metrics catalog is available on gitlab.com in our Runbooks project. I've included a link here. Thank you very much.